Hello and welcome back to another episode of Luxies, the series where we look at things that seem interesting. So today it's all about IMGUI. I don't actually know how to pronounce this. IMGUI. I am. I am. I am GUI. Maybe. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. RS. So we have got we've got Rust bindings for a U immediate mode UI library that I didn't know about before. Uh, that I didn't know before. So it's this ultra hyper turbo cyber mega extra uber experimental thing that brings this um, front end or UL, UI library to the Rust world. And Rust isn't particularly strong in that um, realm, even though there are libraries that do that, like Conrad. I think Conrad is immediate mode as well. And there's also Elemask, which is also immediate mode. So immediate mode, actually, that's something I also had to learn about, even though I'm not quite sure if I understood it correctly. But I think the, the point is that you kind of uh, recreate the entire UI all the time. And then you get some sort of internally build some sort of instruction cache that you can then hand out to the back end. In this case, I think it's OpenGL. So uh, the RS, uh, the Rust bindings, they, they're based on the C I'm GUI. And this one obviously pulls in the actual C++ uh, implemented and C implemented, I don't know if the C is actually a part of it, um, original IMGUI library, uh, which is also standalone, no dependencies <laughs> or something. And that's all, always a big thing for C++, right? Because whenever you have dependencies, stuff gets more complicated and uh, so you don't usually want that. Uh, so yeah, that's how it looks like in C++. As you can see, it is immediate. It just gets executed in some loop and you can redraw stuff uh, with changed data. So in a way, um, you do not change anything ever. You always create something with different, uh, with different data, right? That's how that seems to be working. Um, so there's some overhead uh, associated with it, but be, on the other side you have, it's really easy and straightforward to implement or to use, right? And uh, yeah, it's probably not supposed to be um, competing with any uh, with anything like Qt, for instance, or the operating system supported UI frameworks, no. But it's, if you need a quick uh, UI for 3D applications or little tools that you want, uh, where you might not want to go all web front end, uh, then you can actually use this. So for that, it seems to be very, very interesting uh, just to have something set up real quick. Uh, yeah, and it looks pretty good on the examples here. And even some skinning as possible and some coloring and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it seems to be something for everyone. Look at that. There is a quad tree display here. Amazing. So uh, yeah, I have no idea about how this is. Oh, even uh, there's also support for Unicode apparently. And yeah, if you're interested in this, just have a look at, at it yourself. Let's bring it up on screen. So I think it's Cargo Run. Uh, release. I mean release, it's not really necessary. So I want to specifically use this example called test window and I've pre-compiled this already so we do not do not have to wait. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, can click a little. This actually is kind of its own little window manager inside of an OpenGL screen. And there's heavy tiering because there is no vsync enabled. By the way, uh, this is based on uh, Gleom, which is an awesome OpenGL um, binding for Rust, which is a safe, it's safe, you know, that's why it's so interesting. So last time I tried this, unfortunately, the console here would not show up anywhere where I could use it. Maybe it's somewhere off screen. No, apparently not. Oh, now vSync works. I, mean, uh, I thought it works. It doesn't. No scroll bar, no resize. So some stuff happens. Um, what about the main menu bar? Look at that. Yeah, there's apparently not too much I can do here, even though some things will actually work. Interesting. Of course, I would love to have this console here probably primarily just because I can't have it. 
There are some metrics and see see how this is setting itself up. It's quite nice. And you can control obviously where you want to draw it. Uh, you can draw it right on top of your existing OpenGL um, frame buffer or elsewhere you have full control over that, I think. Even though I never used it myself, but that's uh, what I read so far. It's really, it's really flexible. And uh, yeah, I would love to see a bit more, to learn a bit more about how it's done test window that's show me your show me your code um, so we use gleam I didn't expect it to be used directly uh, the I'm GUI we take everything and time there is some state here that we link to I think this is uh, what we what we change when we hit the buttons and it will be quite interesting to see how that actually works in the code. So we set, uh, so we create the default trait for the state so that we can initialize it more easily. Makes sense. File menu state default for that. Auto resize state default for that. So far, it's quite clear. And uh, oh, that's interesting. I never used the syntax, even though I wonder why it's used because state has default let's let's try it so first thing this is kind of the way you would write it if you would like to just call this for all the remaining members that you didn't put, uh, configure explicitly so we could say no border for instance no border is false or true whatever and then the remaining items will be um, what is the default here by the way false so we set it to true so the remaining items will be set to uh, default let's run this again uh, I'm uh, release let's see how fast it is if it's too slow I shall actually it should only re rebuild this single example right and probably I would actually go for the non-release version in case I want to try out a few more things. So in theory, no border is now on. Cool. So that's that's my change here. But what I actually wanted to say, I think, first of all, uh, how can I know? Cargo run. Let's do the debug version instead. Oh, it's actually nice to see that I have pre-compiled that as well. Uh, anyway, what I wanted to say is that we do not even need this because after all, state default is a valid thing. So maybe uh, this was created later, right? So that's how this could look like. And let's just pull the latest just in case. I didn't, or this changed in the meanwhile already. And here, look at that, that's the actually interesting part, the render loop, right? So support render, let's open this up. Uh, examples, support, and there's a single module where there is the render function, here it is. And uh, yeah, this basically returns true as long as you wanna render. Uh, And if you are not active or not opened anymore for some reason, then we shall um, terminate basically or get out of this loop and then terminate. Okay, so what can we do here? So this takes, this takes a clear color, which is just the default clear color and a function that in turn takes a borrow of a frame and then you can do stuff with that. I don't know, what, what do they do? They show the test window. Ah, I see. So probably that's where they actually draw uh, into the test window, right? Which is quite, which is quite amazing. Here all the magic is probably happening. So show user guide, I guess this is uh, the one window that we have seen. Where is this called? It's called right here and yeah. Bullet text, bullet text. It's interesting that there is a special string, maybe because it has to go to a, a C or C++ interface after all, right? So 
you probably have to take some precautions to make this happen properly. Mm. Even though I don't know how that how that actually works. Uh, does it allocate? Does it share it? Probably it should be fine just sharing it. But anyway, that's a detail that we definitely don't want to bother about. And here, here, if you want to show app metrics, we show that stuff. Where's the console, by the way, considering that I would never see it. Show app console. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? We set up a, yeah, how does all that work? Show example, auto resize. So the, the about window, right? The about window creates a, I think, oh, create a new window, set the name. And the interesting part is that it apparently is able to keep state somehow, right? Because if I run this and I have a look at this about window, if it ever shows up, Ah, then will it pop up at the same spot or will it pop up at the one that it had previously? See, so that's kind of the the magic of immediate mode UIs, right? You create it here, but you don't care about some basic state. It seems to keep it. So the frame might even be reused and it kind of keeps IDs of these things, even though you don't keep track of any of this, right? I don't know how it identifies these. Uh, really, I have no idea how that really worked. Opened, so that's how you can, oh, and you, you can even uh, allow it to change state for you, that's interesting. And the build function, I think that's, basic oh and you reuse this existing frame and you just keep adding text so you don't add text directly to the window no it kind of yeah it, it's really interesting i have no clue how that really works it must have some sort of stack right because it must know that it's currently dealing with the window and after the scope it's not dealing with that window anymore otherwise these items would go anywhere else ah oh, nice but it's all about the frame. So this guy must keep the state here uh, also between the frames because otherwise you couldn't open or close these without them uh, popping back to where they were. And this is where we, that's yeah, really interesting. How does that work? It must keep track of these somehow. Uh, and I don't see any ID floating around here. Interestingly, in Conrad, you have IDs to, and you have to manage them yourself. Well, so this is where it makes sense to me, right? Because that's how it identifies them. That's how it stores state for you. But here, this is entirely hidden, which is very nice to work with, I, I suppose. And uh, yeah, so that's the, um, what kind of window is this? This is the main window, I think. And uh, you set up collapsible, okay. I would have written it with an A here, collapsible, but maybe that's totally wrong. Uh, probably it's totally wrong. So I guess I learned something today. Yeah, and so all the different kind of um, features that a window can have, uh, they're apparently set up here. And in the build mode, again, we just go ahead with these individual widgets and whatever there might be, setting up a menu here creating menu items all right all right uh yeah and not to forget it's interesting that the selected or the the state change here it's written directly into your uh variable right so probably it's a boolean for these ones so it changes your state uh the state of your model and then you can behave accordingly i guess and uh, yeah i see why writing uis like this is useful, right? Because you can basically write your or execute your UI drawing code anywhere in your app, where, wherever you find it uh, suitable. Uh, so is there anything else interesting here? Besides the fact that it looks very, very straightforward, 
I'd say no, there's nothing else here. Dummy menu, so if there is no... Interesting that you don't have to provide a build method per se, but a menu item probably doesn't have anything anyway. Um, yeah, this is why that works, but the menu has it. And then you just go ahead. Oh, yeah, then you just go ahead. Passing the state around. So um, this is purely functional, which is very nice. Um, and also works nicely with the borrow checker. Awesome. Yeah, and it keeps going and keeps going. And after all, the console, I think, is nothing here. It really is just, um, yeah, the state the state is not used at all. So I guess I'm not missing, missing out on anything. So yeah, that's super, super nice, super interesting. Unfortunately, this is all. There is a hello world, but the test window is probably the best one we have. I would be very interested in seeing these more advanced widgets uh, and see how it's done. Oh, look at that. There, the kerning is a bit close, but yeah, I really, really like it because now we are entering um, entering a phase in Rust where you can start providing simple user interfaces as well that are not based on web technology, like having a front end that serves serves your um, data, right? Um, but anyway, that should be it. I think it's super, totally worth having a look, look, especially since Gleom is such a great OpenGL library uh, that you probably want to be acquainted with if you do any kind of graphics or UI stuff. Um, looks easy to use. Very, very nice. Um, oh, actually, yeah, that's just some, some borrow, uh, some, some basic interface stuff, right? So we, how, how do we get that? And that should be, should be it. So we can ask the M GUI for stuff, right? So we can, yeah, I don't know where the target is coming from. Okay. So from, from the back end, you get, you get the dimensions they can set set up the dimensions of the frame. So this is basically just the stuff you need to do to set up MGUI for for drawing. And uh, probably that's a bit where most of the magic is happening. There's a Gleom renderer that does that stuff. Okay. Then you set it to render into that particular backend. And where is that render function, by the way? Where is it used? F. Where do you call F? There. There you do it. So here you generate the frame. Um, then you render it. Then you basically call this one here. Uh, this one. And... Uh, then you will pull on events and um, store them for later use in the immediate mode UI, right? So actually the UI doesn't doesn't react to you, but in fact, it just redraws itself uh, all the time here and um, yeah, uses uh, the active state. So probably it would be useful and there's something you can obviously do to check if the state actually changed and if it doesn't change or didn't change, you do not render, right? And this is probably what you would want to do. But here, the render loop or the, the rendering is um, tied to the polling. So if you would separate this, you could actually render only when something actually happened, right? But then you can't combine this. In a way, the polling of the, the state has nothing to do with the rendering. So two orthogonal concepts have been mixed here, which uh, just makes you more infle uh, unflexible. But I think for the purpose of the demonstration, it's totally totally all right. Yeah, so I like it. Not to say I love it. Um, hope you liked it. Hope you liked it too. Thanks for watching and have a great day.